Hello dear friends, this is your friend Roy Olson, your missionary to Romania, speaking to you from Apavia, and I would like to talk to you today about the ultimate goal of the gospel. The ultimate goal of the gospel. What is this all about? Where are we going? Uh, what is the ultimate desire of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I have some thoughts I'd like to share with you, if I may. The cross, Jesus died on the cross, his vicarious atoning death on the cross was for uh, the purposes enumerated in Isaiah chapter 53, and ultimately is for the payment in full for all people, for all time, for all sin, rebellion, transgression, and all the different flavors of sin as enumerated in, again, Isaiah 53. The cross was the atonement or the payment or the redemption price for human beings. But for what purpose? Is there something beyond the cross? I love the hymn, On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where Jesus suffered and died. And I cherish the old rugged cross. Now, uh, those uh, songs, magnificent hymns of the church, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. Powerful, truth-filled, magnificent hymns of the church. But is there something beyond that? We turn to the Gospel of John and Jesus is speaking there and he's telling his disciples, I'm going away. I'm going away. I'm going to prepare a place for you. So Jesus is going someplace. Well, we know he's going to the cross, and then he's going to return to the Father. So he's going someplace. I go, but he's going to prepare a place. So he's going to prepare. Now, in the um, Romanian language, is loquince. It's a dwelling place. Uh, like uh, my loquenza is in Apavia in Romania. That's my dwelling place, my home. Uh, and uh, Jesus says, I'm going to prepare such a dwelling place for you. And then he goes on, he says that where I am, there ye may be also. That key phrase, where I am. Now, where are you, Jesus? At that point when you were speaking, where were you? Jerusalem? Yes, but no. The upper room? Where were you, Jesus? Where I am, there ye may be also. And so, uh, of course, the disciples says, you know, we don't know where you're going. We don't understand, basically. And Jesus is. Don't you know that where I am, he didn't say Jerusalem, he didn't say the upper room, he didn't say Israel, he didn't say on earth. Where are you then, Jesus? What are you talking about? He said, don't you know that I am in the Father? Where are you, Jesus? I'm in the Father. But Jesus, you're here in Jerusalem, you're here in Israel. Yes, but no, I am in the Father. And he is expressively, almost pleadingly, absolutely clearly saying 
that he is in the Father. That is the ultimate place, his dwelling place. That's where he is. And he says, I'm going to prepare a place that where I am in the Father. There, incredible, you may be also. So Jesus is going to prepare a place so that where he is in the Father, there we may also be with him in the Father. Magnificent words. And so Jesus, what was he doing? Well, he's preparing the place. How did he do that? By the cross. He paid for the sin. He removed the sin barrier that prevents us from being where he is in the Father. And what else did he do? Well, he said, when I go, the Father will send the Holy Spirit upon you. More preparation. I go to prepare a place for you. The cross, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Why? So that where I am, there ye may be also. You remember Jesus, again in the Gospel of John further on, he says that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and you may be with us, that we may be one in the Father. The whole gospel message is being restored to intimate fellowship, oneness with God the Father, along with our Lord Jesus Christ and the Blessed Holy Spirit. And indeed, there we see that the Trinity, God the Father, God the, Holy, the, the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all working together, laboring together. God the Father, His will. God the Son came to pay the uh, supreme sacrifice, his atoning death on the cross, and God the Holy Spirit coming to infill us. What for what purpose? That we might be together with our Lord Jesus Christ in the Father. It seems that Moses found this place even before the cross because you remember in Psalm, he, he, he said, He that dwelleth, not visits once in a while, but dwelleth in that secret place. What do you mean secret place? He means that when you get there, you can't take anybody else with you. It's you and the Father, a personal relationship with Him, intimacy. Uh, the Bible described in thy presence, his presence, his fullness of joy, ecstatic, overwhelming, incomprehensible, incomparable joy. And at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. We were designed to be in that place that Jesus has prepared for us. That is the ultimate yearning of the human heart to be one with Jesus in the Father. Have you ever been there? Have you ever had a little sampling? Have you ever uh, tasted and seen what that is like? The Apostle Paul did, did he not? Whatever the third heaven was, uh, obviously he was transformed for life and for eternity to the point where he says, you know, I'd much rather be there than here, but I'll stay here for you. But my personal desire is to be there. He had tasted, he had seen. He that dwelleth in this secret place, and you can have that secret place, of the Most High. There is none higher than the Most High. The Romanian says, Duane Domniseo a tot poternic, Lord God almighty, omnipotent. And he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under that shadow, that protection 
of the Almighty. You don't get any more better protection than that. The Secret Service couldn't be protect you better than the shadow of the Almighty. And then I will say of the Lord, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And so, dear saints, the cross, the infilling, the baptism of the Holy Spirit are all designed for one thing, not to make, give us power, not to uh, do those side issues of, uh, they're, they're all included, they're all good, but it's not the, the ultimate. The ultimate is we might be with him, that where he is, there we may be also. And what will happen when we do that? That is the place of ultimate fruitfulness. We, we know the adage, you know, busyness is not necessarily fruitfulness. The Apostle Paul said, you know, there's wood, hay, and stubble, and then there's gold and silver and precious stones. And when we abide in him, stay there, he that dwelleth in the secret place, abiding in him, is it? He says, Bring, bear much fruit without the helter-skelter, without the busyness, without the stress, without all that, but just the peaceful, joyful, powerful, uh, ultimate productivity of abiding in Him. And then, like Paul says, we don't do a lot of shadow boxing, but everything counts every prayer, every action, and so on. I want to be there. I've tasted. I want to go back there. And I would like to live the remaining years of my life in that secret place of the Most High, united with Jesus, that where He is, there I may be also. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusted in him. Good to talk to you again. Trust this little meditation is a blessing to you. And may you also dwell in that secret place of the Most High.